Good morning. It has been a long time and I'm glad to make another video. I don't make them until God puts it on my heart to make them. But God woke me up this morning at like 2.50 and I just started thanking him and praising him. And then I, um, I went upstairs and I started pleading the blood of Jesus over my kids and just praying for them and speaking into them. They're knocked out sleep, of course, but I'm just praying over them and just rebuking the devil. And I'm just crying and snotting. And it's just so wonderful to do that every now and then. I don't do that every night. But when God wakes me up like that, I got to, I got to move. And so um, I was going to go back to sleep, but it had been on my heart probably for about a week to make a video on... Um, the book of Daniel chapter 5. And so I'm just going to be obedient. Just going to be obedient. Um Okay, so let me try to put all this together. You have Belshazzar. Belshazzar. He was the grandson of King Nebuchadnezzar. Now, King Nebuchadnezzar was a great king um, of Babylon. And he, you know, had all this stuff. Like, he had a great kingdom. And God, God blessed him. Anytime we get, you know, these wonderful, great blessings without a lot of drama that comes behind it, it's God. So... Anyways, the Bible tells us that God blessed this king to have, you know, this kingdom or whatever and to have all the great things that he had. And so he didn't acknowledge God and he ended up basically becoming like a beast of the field. The Bible says he became like a beast of the field. He was eating the grass. He was on all fours. He literally was taken away from his kingdom and put into the woods or the forest or whatever to live like an animal for years seven i believe and that's tough like if you believe that the word is true if you just imagine that that is pretty tough all because he would not not acknowledge the fact that god is the one that blessed him that's why it is so important to stay humble 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 if you don't stay humble god will humble you he will humble you. That's a good message for this message. That's a good message. So here you got King uh, Nebuchadnezzar. He's big, strong, mighty king. And he don't want to acknowledge the fact that God blessed him. So he gets dropped down to literally be like a little beast crawling around, eating the grass, you know. And so that happened. Fast forward, and then, you know, after he served his time or whatever, he got to go, he got to be the king again. He got to go back into the palace and live like a king and rule stuff. And I bet you he had some act right then. Then he was able to tell people, oh, it's God. It's not me. I didn't do it. I didn't build it. I'm not protecting us like I should be. It's God. I'm sure after that, he gave God his glory. Anywho, after that, time went on. He has some kids, grandkids, woo -woo, woo woo Here comes Belshazzar. Now, Belshazzar, it says in Daniel 5 that he decided he was going to have a big feast. A thousand nobles and his wives and concubines. So they're having a big party. Okay, you know, that's not so bad. But as they're having this big party and they're turning up and doing whatever they're doing, he decides... Oh, you know, it's not good enough for us to have this party and we're drinking our wine and we're doing what we're doing. It's not good enough for me to just keep it like this. I need to have those silver and gold goblets that are in the temple. You know, the ones that came from Jerusalem, you know, from the, the Jewish folks. Let me let me get those out of their temple that they use to praise their God. Let me get those. So he calls for those and then they're pouring up in those drinks and then they're drinking out of the goblets that are supposed to be in the temple that are supposed to be used for God. As if that's not bad enough, then while they're drinking in God's goblets, then they start praising, praising and worshiping the their gods, the gods of silver and gold and bronze, and they're turning up with God's goblets. They're turning up and woo, 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 and all that stuff. 
And in the middle of all of that, out of nowhere, while they're like, hey, hey, we got our goblets, praise the silver, praise the gold. They're turning up, turning up. And out of nowhere, boom, comes fingers, chest fingers out of nowhere that are writing on the wall. They're just writing on the wall. Immediately, the king, Belshazzar, is like, oh my gosh. The Bible says he turned pale. Something like this. He turned pale and his knees started to shake and buckle. Mine would too if I saw just some fingers writing on the wall. But anywho, so he sees these fingers and he's like, uh, and he starts, go get the, the enchanters and the ones that can tell you, you know, your future and stuff. Go get them. So he's going to ask for them and they come. And, you know, they they may not have been there at the party. Maybe they were. I'm not sure. But they came and he's like, what does this writing on the wall mean? What is this? And they're like, you know, they're probably making all kinds of noises. Like, I don't know. And so he's getting mad and he's like, what do you mean you don't know? Then he gets even more scared and he turns more pale. And he's just like, and so while he's, you know, freaking out, knees shaking, turning pale, then it says the queen mother, she comes in, which I guess is his mom. She comes in and she's like, well, you're turning so pale, you know, all the people like, wait a minute, just calm down. You know, your granddad, there was a guy who was able to tell him his dreams and tell him what was going on. And he was like the best of all the enchanters. And, you know, he serves this guide, the real guide, and he he's really wise and, you know, he's blessed and can tell you all this stuff. So she calls for him, which is Daniel, but they call him Belteshazzar. So they call for Belteshazzar, which is really Daniel. And Daniel comes out and Daniel's like, <clears throat> you know, how can I help you? And he says, can you please tell me what the writings on the wall are? If you can, I'm going to give you a gold chain and a purple robe and you're going to be third in the kingdom. I'm going to give you all these things. And Daniel's like, okay, you know, I don't need any of those things. You can keep all those gifts, but I will tell you what is on the wall. So he tells him what's on the wall is meanie, meanie, partian, tarkles, tarkle partians. Something like that. Mene, mene. Anyways, he basically, I guess I should find it. He tells him, here it is. Mene, mene, tekel, ooh, partions. And it says, this is the interpretation of the, uh, of the thing. Mene, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Purins. Thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. It says, Then commanded Belshazzar to clothe him with the scarlet and put the chain on his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. In that night, Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain. And Darius, the Median or the Mede person, took the kingdom being about three score and two years old. So he was 62. The point is, this is where this is where we need to listen. This is where it gets good. It says, thou art numbered. Um, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. You have been weighed in the balances and are found wanting. And that is so, I wish I had a balance or something. That's, oh, this is kind of like it. It's just so crazy. Like, this is my example. So, it's like you have been weighed in the balances. If you had to put weights on something, I'm not a good balance. But this is basically what he's saying. He's saying, your granddad literally became a beast of the field. And you knew that. If your grand your granddad became a beast of the field or got thrown in prison or you know had to be exiled or whatever if anything happened to your grandpa and he's the king everybody knew what happened e everybody knew what happened so you knew what happened you knew what your grandfather did and I'm sure he told y'all when he came back 
this happened because I didn't honor God. So you knew that your granddad had suffered whatever he suffered simply because he would not give God his credit because he dishonored God and acted like God didn't do what he did. So you knew that. You knew that. This is what you knew. This is what you knew. So you knew. Let me put it like that. So you knew it. You knew it's leaning on that side. But what you did was really you didn't do nothing. But I'm gonna give you one little. Give me one little. You knew this much, and you did this much. He said you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. And he said, this night, you're going to be out of there. And that's what happened. So let me just put this in easy terms. We all know amount an amount of something. If, For example, if I decide to, at the age of 15 or 16, start to start to read the Bible and start to learn about God, and I only learn three things about God. I know I need to honor my mom. I need to not lie and I shouldn't steal. I know three things about God. That means I got my three things on my scale over here. This is what I know. And I believe it. I receive this. I know this. It's about 117, 250,000 other things in the Bible. But this is what I know. This is what I've received of the word. And this is what I can say. Yeah, I agree with that. This is what I know. But I only do two of the things that I know. This is an uneven scale. I know three things of the word I've told God. I get it. I understand it. Because sometimes you can know stuff, but it hasn't been made clear to you. You don't understand it. You don't. And God knows your heart. You can't just say, well, God, I didn't understand when you do understand, you know. But you know those three things and you only do let me pull up the two, the two things. Your scale is unbalanced and God is looking for us to have a balanced scale. If you know better, we hear this all the time. If you know better, do better. And you know, but you're not doing, God is going to hold you accountable for that. You're going to pay for that. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what people tell you, you know, oh, once once you're saved and once you know you're good, that is not true. That is not true.